I'm going to take you guys through a carnivore diet day of eating based on the principles of nutrient density through high quality animal foods. They contain the highest amount of the most available forms of every single vitamin, mineral, element, and fatty acid our body needs. In addition to that, I'm going to follow some indigenous and native dieting principles that we used to consume raw, cooked, as well as fermented animal foods. First, let's get our grill lit up. So this is how I set up my grill every day. I turn the burners to off. I turn the gas on so the gas builds up in the line. I take the grate up. And then I put some wood on top of the burners. You guys can see I put some old grates at the bottom to rest on the burner so I have somewhere to place the wood. You don't actually need those old grates to put wood on top of the burners, it just makes it a little easier. Then we turn the gas on. The only problem here, as with any grill, is when it's really windy outside is when you have an issue. Doesn't matter how cold it is, doesn't matter how hot it is, the wind is the issue. While the grill's heating up, I'm gonna grab my high meat, the fermented meat. It's actually outside airing out overnight. Oh man, this smells horrible. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. So this meat has been fermenting for, I think at least a month now. And we're gonna eat some of it. Generally, you don't wanna air this out for a long period of time overnight as flies will lay eggs in the warmer months. Uh, but since it's winter outside and there were no flies, I decided to do it overnight. Doesn't that look good? I don't even recommend eating this inside, to be honest. <sighs> Holy shit. I did a video on this. <sighs> oh my God. As I did a video on this like two weeks ago, the smoking high meat with the sausage in my mouth, if any of you boys want to see that. But this is something else, man. This is otherworldly. I've never smelled anything this bad. At least, oh man, that's bad. That is so horrible. Let's eat it. So Frank, why are you eating disgusting rotten meat? Why did indigenous groups eat disgusting rotten meat? It's because of the high vitamin K2 content and the beneficial bacteria content. Last time I said, you know, the jar smelled and the meat didn't smell that bad itself. This time, this is absolutely ridiculously bad. Oh my God. This is like crazy. This is absolute insanity. Guys, you know, sometimes I really do question what's going through my head, but uh, let's stop being a little girl and let's eat it. I'm not gonna lie guys, that, that's, that's pretty wild, that's pretty gnarly. I'll, we'll leave it at that for today, we'll just have a couple bites. 
Um, let me go grab another jar and see if it tastes different. So yeah, I mean, beneficial bacteria, vitamin K2 content. I'm not into this wacko daco shit, guys. I'm trying to honestly, objectively figure out if we should be eating rotten animal foods. So here I have another jar. Uh, the first jar was fat. This jar is protein. So this doesn't smell nearly as, as rancid because fat has a different smell to it when it ferments. Flavor profile, guys, very sour. Sour, acidic, funky. Well, if you guys want to know more about high meat, check out my high meat video. Let's go curl up some steak. <laughs> okay, guys, so today I'm going to have a bone-in chuck steak uh, that I got from a local farm. This was $6.50 a pound bone-in. Not the best price, especially for chuck. I have a pound of yellow grass-fed beef fat. This is going to be my primary calories and nutritional source of fat soluble vitamins. And then we have uh, the other half of the beef brain that you guys saw me eat the other day. Uh, what we'll do is we'll grill this stuff up and then we'll come back inside and we'll pan sear the beef brain. This is amazing source of DHA, omega-3, cholesterol. Uh, just before I go outside, I'm gonna put this on a paper towel so it dries out so that when we come back inside to sear it, it's very easy to get a nice brown crust. You guys asked for some grilling ASMR, so we're gonna do that today. Hopefully there's no trucks in the background.
All right, guys, we've got a nice, beautiful amber crust. Meat is still very rare on the inside. Look at that. Okay guys, normally I would throw the steak in the oven, but I don't want the really loud background noise of the oven in this video. Uh, so we're just gonna pan sear our beef brain and then we're gonna eat. Okay, I'm warming up my pan on high heat. I'm just gonna put a bit of grass-fed beef tallow that I rendered myself in the pan. This is the beef brain that's been in paper towel for about 10 minutes. As Soon as the pan starts smoking, take the beef brain. Just want to move the beef brain a little bit so it gets an even crust. And I have, I just have the pan off the heat because it's a little too hot. Surface has to be super duper dry. Pan has to be hot, preferably carbon steel or cast iron. Keep moving that beef brain around in the pan, making sure you get an even caramelization. The fat distribution on the bottom of the pan will dictate where the crust forms. So by moving the beef brain around in the pan, we're giving more variation and reducing the margin of error. Okay guys, so earlier we had that fermented meat and fat for the vitamin K2 and some beneficial bacteria. Now we have the beef brain we just fried for some DHA, omega-3 fatty acids, cholesterol, amazing, amazing source of nutrition for the body. We have this yellow grass-fed beef fat. This is just overall fat soluble vitamin content, A, D, E, K2, small amounts of linoleic and linolenic acids that convert to omega-3s and omega-6s. And of course, we have our chuck steak. This is going to be the bulk of our protein, and of course, the fat in this chuck steak is going to contain fat-soluble vitamins as well. We're getting minerals from every single one of these foods here today. Uh, brain in particular also has very high levels of vitamin E and vitamin C, as well as iodine. Truly a nutritionally complete meal. Uh, the only thing missing here would be some liver, but I usually eat liver uh, once a week, usually half a pound to a pound of liver a week now. Uh, here I just have some salt. Uh, this is Redmond salt. So if you guys wanna check out my salt video, it's called Himalayan salt is bullshit. I tasted a bunch of different salts and I actually changed my favorite salt from Celtic salt to Redmond's real salt. If you guys are concerned about prions in brain tissue, Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease, mad cow disease, check out the brain video I did two days ago. But brain is my favorite part of the animal and I will be having it first. It also helps during your meal to eat the fat first. What I tell people is to eat fat to nausea. This will gauge your fat appetite and it will help you reduce the volume of food you're eating. By eating fat to nausea, you will effectively eat less protein, therefore eat less volume of food in general because fat is more calories for less bulk, less stress on the digestive system. I like putting salt on my meals after I cook them. I'm able to gauge the salt that way and not over salt the food. So this might seem like a lot of food guys, but this is the reason I titled the video before and after fasting. I think it's important to establish a base nutrient density in your diet before you start a fast. And then after you fast, you want to consume very high nutrient dense foods. A lot of people think that you need to consume like broths and small amounts of fruit and small amounts of foods when you break a fast? No. Throughout all of evolutionary history, if humans went periods of time without eating, they would usually break their fast on large amounts of animal foods when they were successful in a hunt. And the reason you would eat a lot of food before and after fasting is you want your gut bacteria to be adjusted to the food so when you eat it after the fast, you don't get sick. And in addition to that, if you eat a large amount of nutrient-dense food, and you go on a fast for several days, that food is going to absorb slowly throughout your digestive system. So you're effectively still getting nutrients throughout the fast. Now, at this point, I can honestly say, after having that fermented meat and the brain, I'm not hungry. If I was trying to lose weight, if 
I was trying to restrict my calories, I'm good. Save money, whatever it may be. I'm not hungry right now. I could probably be good for the rest of the day, but uh, Frankie boy feels like a little piggy piggy today, so we're gonna eat some more. So this is just uh, the yellow beef fat. I usually choose the darkest yellow piece of beef fat to eat first. Uh, that's what I usually go by. So before I go into the, the flavor of this, I forgot to describe the beef brain. So the beef brain is a little crisp on the outside, really delicious flavor. Brain is very rich. Uh, the reason I like eating brain so much is because they remind me of eggs. Whenever a food has a high cholesterol content, it carries certain properties. It's very viscous, it sticks to things, it has a very like rich mouth feel. I really do enjoy the taste of brains and for me, as someone that's allergic to eggs, that would love to eat a dozen egg yolks a day, I just use brains as a replacement for that. So overall flavor descriptors for brain, pretty mild taste, but very, very rich, super delicious, one of my favorite foods, especially with the pan sear and the salt on it. That brain that I just cooked was actually a little bit raw in the middle, and I usually like it cooked to rare. Uh, that was completely raw though, so I didn't enjoy it as much as I normally do. But this beef fat, guys, when I take a bite of this beef fat, I literally think in my head, what the, like it's insane. It's like, it's like nutty, it's grassy, it's sweet, it's rich, it's delicious. And you don't even have to put salt on this. You could take beef fat off of an animal and just eat it raw, throw it on a fire, and it's amazing. Any of you Sean Bakers out there, the reason you still eat grain-fed meat is because you haven't tried this. I guarantee you, I send a piece of this beef fat to Mr. Sean Baker, and he will be begging and pleading that he was wrong and that he needs more of this golden grass-fed sustenance. When I eat this beef fat, I think, this is why I'm doing everything I do. Food quality ties into nutrient density, ties into happiness and healthiness, and it's crazy, 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 crazy delicious. I can't, I can't express that enough. That being said, grass-fed meat, is five to 10 times higher in various vitamins, minerals, fatty acids than grain-fed meat is, but the nutrients are contained in the fat. So if there's no fat with your meat, you are not getting nutrients. You take a piece of this beef fat, you put it next to bacon, tastes 10 times better than bacon. I've given lamb fat and various animal fats to my family. My mother loves this fat five times more than bacon. It is objectively more delicious than any meat product most people consume in their diet. Go to a farmer's market, local farm, find some grass-fed meat, ask them for some fat. Now this idea of eating fat first to nausea and then moving on to protein, you only really have to do it once to gauge your appetite and then you can kind of go back and forth between. I don't usually eat fat until I'm nauseous, I usually just switch back and forth between fat and protein until I'm nauseous. Fat isn't necessarily always like tender. Uh, sometimes the fat is very tough and hard to chew. And color is usually an indicator that it's grass-fed. Uh, you guys might have seen, like a, a week or two ago, the super duper orange beef fat. Obviously this beef fat isn't as orange as that animal was, but you still want it to be some hint of yellow or beige. And if it's grass-fed and it's not this color, that could be due to oxidation or that it's not truly grass-fed. So when they store the meat for long periods of time in vacuum seals for like months, the meat loses its nutrient content. Now some of you guys might be thinking, oh, this is why Frankie Boy looked a little thick lately in that Carnivore Goes Vegan video, and hey, what are you gonna do? Now onto the chuck steak. And you know what's funny? Someone asked me on Instagram the other day, Frank, how do you make chuck steak tender? And I was like, you can't. <laughs> it's not tender. It's never gonna be tender. You gotta chew the hell out of it. If you cut it against the grain and leave it really rare, it's pretty good. Like this is pretty much raw in the middle. And I would say this is 
almost as tender as a ribeye, actually, if you cut it right. I had some bone marrow yesterday, and spreading bone marrow on steaks is one of my favorite things. It's like spreading butter on steaks. I would if I was not allergic to butter. But having like pieces of fat with the steak like this is also pretty tasty. Guys, this never gets old. This diet never gets old. It's unbelievable. I've been enjoying meals for like seven years. I don't have the best sense of taste or smell, but you can really get like the strong mineral farmy flavor in the meat. This isn't that gamey or grassy, but you can definitely taste the difference. That's the, uh, that's the cooking gradient. It's completely raw on the inside. And you know, sometimes I always feel like, oh, I could go for like a medium rare steak, pink steak, but then I go to cook it pink and I really don't like it. So anything past like red in the meat, I just don't like. You can really taste the variance from animal to animal. That's why I always tell people who want to buy a whole cow or a side of beef, just be really skeptical because one week I might get stuck with 10 pounds of meat I don't like, but you don't want to be stuck with 600 pounds of meat you don't like. I will probably finish all of this within an hour or so. I'm just gonna watch some TV for a few minutes and finish eating. I just figured there's no real point in showing you guys the rest of the meal. Again, we got a really balanced fat soluble vitamin profile, all the vitamins we need, A, plenty of B vitamins, even vitamin C in the brain tissue and the raw meat. We got some vitamin D3, assuming that the animal was getting some quality sunlight, some quality pasture. We got some vitamin E because these are high quality animal foods. Of course, plenty of omega-3 fatty acids in the brain and the precursors, linoleic and linolenic acids in the fat. All the minerals we need, plenty of iodine in the brain tissue. But thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share the video if you can. Down below in the comments is my Amazon shop. Bunch of nutrient-dense products in there from cod liver oil to vitamin D3 supplements. Patreon is a great way to get personalized question support. Frank, where do you get this? Where do you get your meat? Where do you get that? I'm on Instagram, guys. I'm on Twitter. I'm posting selfies. I'm arguing with carnivore dieters, posting pictures of indigenous people on Twitter, stuff like that. If you guys do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving your overall health, you can do so via my email, frankatufano at gmail.com, or on the website in the comments below, frank-tufano.com. Thanks again, guys, and enjoy the rest of your week.